For generations, Mars has beckoned. Now, the red planet is within our reach. But how do we get there? The key is in the details and in the technology. First and foremost, you need fuel. This is not only true for getting to Mars, but for any form of deep space exploration. Being able to replenish fuel on a long duration journey means massive amounts aren't needed up front, freeing up space for other important things. Enter Robotic Refueling Mission 3, or RRM-3 for short. This demonstration launched to the International Space Station in December of 2018 and has helped us develop tools and techniques needed to replenish cryogenic fluid in space. Transferring cryogenic fluids has never been done before in space. These super cold fluids can be used as propellants, coolants, or for life support systems. Being able to replenish these fluids that run out, otherwise known as consumables, is an important part of the sustainable exploration roadmap. Not just for Mars, but for NASA's Artemis program, which will land the first woman and the next man on the moon. Since refueling cryogenic fluids in space has never been done before, RM3 tested the technologies and techniques needed to make that possible. First, we sent the RM3 payload and its three main tools to Space Station, where astronauts assembled the parts. When I was uh, living aboard the International Space Station in the spring of 2019, I was fortunate enough to take part in the uh, small, very small part in the robotic refueling mission three. Uh, and my job was to unload the components of the actual RRM-3 from one of our visiting vehicles. And we take it into our Japanese experimental module, the gym, where we have an airlock. And right inside of the airlock, we unpacked all of the uh, boxes, much like you would a piece of uh, furniture that you had to assemble yourself at home. So unpacked all of the pieces, we did a checkout. Uh, we worked with the ground, we got everything assembled, and then we placed it into the Japanese airlock and from there we were able to put it outside of the International Space Station. So um, my involvement in RRM3 was the physical final assembly of the actual components. RRM3 was delivered to the space station by a SpaceX Dragon on the company's 16th commercial resupply services mission and installed on the outside of station by the Canadian robot Dexter. Dexter then picked up the tools from the JEM airlock and installed them onto the RRM3 payload. The ground operations team was now ready to begin operating the three tools to test how they would work in space. For the first set of operations, conducted in August 2019, Dexter used one of the RRM3 tools to prepare the RRM3 module's interface for transferring cryogenic fuel. The second set of operations was then conducted in October 2020. For these, Dexter used one of the remaining two tools to insert an 11-foot-long hose in an open port and the other snake-like camera inspection tools simultaneously to verify the hose's position in the inside of RM3's tubing. This marked the first time that Dexter had tools in both arms working the same tasks simultaneously. The RM3 demonstration added experience and information to NASA's knowledge base on the storage and transferring cryogenic fluids in space. It is currently still on station where it will conduct one final set of operations in mid-2022. For getting to the moon, Mars, and beyond, cryogenic fluids will be used as propellants and to maintain life support systems for astronauts. The Mars atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide, which could be converted to liquid oxygen, a type of cryogenic fluid that could be used both as propellant and for breathing. Astronauts may be able to fuel rockets or replenish their oxygen supplies using compounds found in the Martian atmosphere. A tool on the Mars Perseverance rover called Mars Oxygen In-Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE, is set to demonstrate the first ever conversion of Martian carbon dioxide to oxygen, which is another important piece of the puzzle. In order to make a sustained human presence in space a reality, humans and robots will have to work together using technologies like those developed by RM3 and MOXIE. A lot of people ask about, uh, you know, whose job is exploring outer space? Is it robots or is it humans? And I believe that uh, it requires teamwork between robots and humans and that our exploration is not complete or even possi possible without both. 
So robots can go farther, uh, they're less expensive, and um, they can go for longer periods of time. They don't require as much maintenance. You don't have to feed and care for a robot, much like you do if you send me back to space. So like the Mars rovers, the Galileo that uh, explored Jupiter and its moons, the Hubble and the soon to be James Webb Space Telescope, they're doing, mission, they're doing missions in locations that humans to this point don't have the capability to go. There's also something very important about humans wanting to know what it's like to be there. You know, it, it's not enough for humans to take a picture of Mount Everest or Antarctica and say, oh, okay, that's what it looks like. The human condition is we are, we are born to explore. We're born to say, what if, what's just beyond what we know? Uh, and what is it like to be there? And so the human side of space exploration, first of all, it's orders of magnitude closer to Earth. Uh, we cannot, have not been able to send humans nearly as far as we've been able to send uh, robotic probes. Um, but they're two very different missions and they serve a different type of curiosity. Mars and Deep Space are calling human explorers, and RM3 is a step toward helping NASA answer that call. Though it sounds complex, the idea is simple. Having the ability to refuel will allow NASA to embark on longer journeys to explore the depths of our solar system.